Hello all, my name is Krishna and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are basically going to discuss about dropout and regularization. Now we need to understand one thing is that whenever we have an artificial neural network which is very deep, at that time you will understand that we will be having many weights and many bias parameters. And when we have a huge amount of weight parameters and bias parameters, then what will happen is that the artificial neural network tends to overfit the data set problem or a particular use case. So we should try to find out a way how to fix that particular overfitting problem. Understand that whenever we have a multi-layered neural network, underfitting will never happen because we will basically be having multiple layers in a multiple layer neural network. Suppose if we just have one layer neural network, at that time underfitting will usually happen. So always remember for a multi-layered neural network, we will never face underfitting. But yes, overfitting will be a problem because as we go on creating a neural network in a deeper way, at that time, which each and every addition of a weight parameter, the weights, what it does is that it tries to fit the training data perfectly. So in that particular case, what will happen is that you will be facing a high variance problem. That basically means an overfitting problem. So there are two basic ways to solve an overfitting problem. The first way I would like to term it as regularization. You have heard of regularization. In regularization, we have also discussed in machine learning and there are two types of regularization like L1 and L2. But in today's session, we'll basically be discussing about second type, which is called as dropout. By the implementation of dropout, this will also help us to, you know, implement a technique which is similar to a regularization. We'll try to understand what exactly is dropout. Now, this dropout thesis was basically written in 2014 with uh, the help of two po two people. One is Nitish Srivastav. Nitish Srivastav. And the second person is my favorite, Jeffrey Hinton. So Nitish Srivastav's thesis was all about dropout. And he was under, he was basically, he was a student of Jeffrey Hinton. And that time this particular thesis came somewhere around 2013-14. And now we'll try to understand how does dropout work. And I'll also be given the thesis paper description, I mean URL in the description box so that you can go and read. Because after understanding this particular explanation, I think that will be a very easier way for you to just read a thesis paper and understand all the techniques that we'll be discussing over here. So to begin with, let us take a very small, very good example. Like how does dropout, how, how, how we'll basically implement a dropout layer in a neural network. So to begin with, first of all, I just write, like to revise a machine learning concept which is called as random forest algorithm. So suppose, I hope everybody knows random forest uh, algorithm. In random forest, you know that we create multiple decision trees. Now each and every decision tree over here is basically, you know, we will be creating a decision tree to its complete depth. When we say to its complete depth, then each and every decision tree will be leading to an overfitting problem. It will try to overfit the data and whenever we are using decision trees in the, inside random forest. But you should remember, random forest has one more technique. We will not be using all the features in random forest. Right? We will just be using a sample or a subset of features. We'll be using a subset of features. Now when we use a subset of features, whatever this overfitting condition is happening, this subset of features basically is our regularization method, which will actually reduce this particular overfitting problem and it will try to improve the accuracy, you know. And if you don't know about random forest, I would suggest you please go through my playlist over there. I have uploaded a lot of videos on random forest, both practical implementation and theoretical part. But why I have discussed about random forest over here is that because you should know this subset of features. We create decision tree with the help of subset of features and we create multiple decision trees, you know. So every time whenever we are creating a new decision tree, at that time what will happen, we will have some different subset of features which will be like my independent feature. Similarly, to implement the dropout, suppose this is my neural network. Suppose this is my neural network. Suppose my first layer is basically my hidden layer, uh, sorry, input layer. The second layer is basically my hidden layer 1, hidden layer 2 and this is finally my output layer. Okay. Now. To implement a dropout layer, what we basically do is that we select a dropout ratio. Dropout ratio. Dropout ratio. Suppose if I indicate this as P. Now usually the dropout ratio will be between 0 to less than P, less than 1. 
okay less than or equal to 1 now the dropout ratio over here also indicates that how we did for a random forest right we selected sample or subset of features similarly over here we will be selecting subset of features from the input layer similarly we will be selecting subset of activation function or, or the hidden neurons in the hidden layer similarly over here also we will be selecting subset of neurons we will not be selecting everything we will just be selecting subset of features in each and every hidden layer along with the input features so over here you can see that i have selected over here two feature okay initially my two features are inactive so i can say that my p value for the first layer is basically 0.5 now this p value is nothing but my dropout ratio okay similarly over here in my hidden layer one i can see that over here two are activated remaining all are deactivated right so again i may select p value as 0.5 i'm just approximately saying it as 0.5 because here i have five nodes and from that three are activated two are deactivated right sorry two are activated and three are deactivated similarly over here i can see that two are inactivated and two are activated so here also my value will p or will be 0.5 how to select the p value i'll just tell you in a while but just understand that i have created a neural network and here i have selected dropout ratio of p is equal to 0.5 here also p is equal to 0.5 in each and every layer i have selected p is equal to 0.5 now you should understand that when my forward and the backward propagation will be going on when i select the p value as 0.5 it will randomly select some features it will deactivate them when it deactivates them suppose in this case my first two, uh, my the second and the fourth node is deactivated so my input will get passed all the activation function now in my second layer also in my first hidden layer you should see that again i have selected p value as 0.5 so randomly it will select some of the activation function some of the neurons over here it will deactivate them all the processing will be same all the processing will be same right but you should understand based on the p value it will just deactivate some of the neurons then simultaneously go to the next layer over here again p value will be there and finally we'll get the output now this is with respect to the first propagation right now in the backward propagation backward propagation will be almost same as i discussed in my previous video right whichever neurons are getting activated whichever neurons are activated their weights will get updated okay their weights will get updated now in the next iteration in the first iteration you saw that some are got deactivated some are got activated in the next iteration again when i say p value as 0.5 half of this node in the input feature will again deactivated and it will be just selected you know uh, as a subset of feature and it will be selected randomly okay it will be selected randomly every time with, with respect to this probability value features will get selected randomly and that is all the crux idea behind dropout layer okay and it is almost similar to random forest where you just select the number of features you create the decision tree and finally you get the majority vote uh, as your output and then you implement the random forest now in this case what you are doing is that in order to improve in order to improve the overfitting problem overfitting problem instead of using regularization like l1 and n2 you are basically using dropout ratio now in each drop and dropout ratio what you are trying to do you are deactivating some of the neurons you are activating some of the neurons or you can also call it as an activation function you are deactivating some of the input features and you are activating some of the input features also and by that way the whole process is going on right now the next question rises if my training data is basically deactivating and activating what about my test data what about my test data now a simple technique is basically applies for uh, test data whenever i want to predict for my test data all i have to do is that all the neurons will get connected just understand everything will get connected for the test data okay there will be no deactivated or activated neurons or deactivated or activated features or everything will be connected now once it is connected right suppose this is connected right this is connected everything is connected suppose i'm connecting everything all one additional work that you have to do for all these weights for all these weights that were actually fixed during training the data this probability will get multiplied so W multiplied by P will happen for each and every weights in each and every layer. That is a simple hack that is basically applied for the test data to find what is the output predicted for the test data. We just have to multiply the weights and the probability value that we are selecting, which is basically my dropout ratio. Okay, and that is how it works for the test data. Now the next question arises: How do we select the P value? I'll I'll give you a small and simple hack. One way is that. i can basically use hyperparameter optimization 
you know to find the exact p value and the general scenario is that whenever a deep neural network is doing an overfitting your p value should be a little bit higher okay when i say a little bit higher it should at least be greater than 0.5 but again if you want to find the exact p value which is suitable for your use case you can basically apply hyperparameter optimization now hyperparameter optimization may be many you can use cross validation you can use many more which i have already implemented in machine learning i'll show you this particular example everything in the upcoming classes in the practical implementation because uh, if, i'll also show you that if i don't apply dropout ratio you can see that the, the the whole artificial neural network will tend to overfit the data but after applying uh, dropout ratio you will be seeing that the error and the accuracy rate you know the bar, the variance will be it will not be that much high okay it will be little bit less and i hope you understood about dropout ratio you understood about what is this all about you know dropout ratio you can also call it as a dropout layer now dropout layer is basically just like a thinking that each and every layer will be created between this between this uh, like suppose if i take my input feature and the hidden layer there will be a dropout layer created over here which will be deactivating and activating the input feature similarly in the hidden layer so i hope you like this particular video please do let me know like if you have any questions i'll see you all in the next video have a great day ahead please do subscribe the channel if you have not already done please share with all your friends whoever require this kind of help thank you one and all i'll see you all in the next video